All right, I think slash hope that is working. That all looks good. Cool. Let's edit this to go public. Hopefully it'll work. Alrighty, hopefully hello to everyone. Let's see if people start filtering. Because I should have announced this and I didn't. Oh, someone's in here anyway. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let the people flock in. I was going to make a thing saying I was going to go live, but I forgot. I was going to do that yesterday. So we'll, we'll have a bit of the usual sort of preamble. Um, to let here to be your problem. I'm always great. To, I'm always grateful for that. The squeak will indeed. Uh, so this will be third gen. We'll have a, a gentle meander through through the. Uh, how long will this be going on for? Um, until we're out of third gen artwork. Uh, so maybe an hour because the third gen one isn't that big. Um, so people are. People are steadily flocking in now. I should have really done this properly, but again, I forgot. Yeah, just when I wanted to be productive. Isn't that the way it always goes? All right. All right, so yeah, some people are notified. I'd like to see you make a video for things I'd like to see in Wilds. Uh, I... I'm not really about that hype content. I might, like, when we actually know a lot more, when we've actually seen some proper gameplay, I might do something like that, um, but not anytime soon. So, uh, people are steadily ticking in now. That's probably enough preamble. And yeah, no, I, I, by all means get good grades by the Zombie Survival Guide. You'll need it when the heat arrives. And yes, no, <laughs> I think people, are, yeah, I think roughly an hour maybe, something like that. Um, no, I'm glad everyone's joining, enjoying a War Z, World War Z. This is to bring some more Big Lizard content back into your lives before Monster Hunter content resumes. Uh, so, so this barrier off, let's, let's hop into it, that's enough preamble. People, people have had enough time to get in, probably. Yeah, someone stole your zombie survival guide, well... When the dead do rise up and you get converted, you can be the one to eat him. Um, yeah, it's what, it's, if I ever get bitten in a zombie apocalypse, my final plan is take as much trend as I possibly can, strap a chainsaw to each arm, and turn myself into a boss fight. I'll be a special infected to, to be everyone else's problem. So this Barrioth is pretty much, this is normal Barrioth, yeah. He's a little bit different. He's a he's a bit chunkier, but he's he's pretty much the same. So we won't spend too long on him. But as we uh, wander through the concept art, we'll decide because third this sort of, from onwards uh, in the concept art, it's much less sort of concepts that didn't get used and a lot of alternate takes on existing monsters. So we will decide. Uh, with chat input, whether they are better than the final product, if they're worse, or if they uh, if they're if they're about the same. So, let us proceed. So this is just normal barrier. There's not really too much to say here. Okay, we've got a lot of bugs. These are these are the, these are the barrier food. There is not a huge amount to say here. They did look initially a little bit more anti, but. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of mouth smacking. That's just something I do as a, like a, a time fill. Someone pointed out in the last stream, and it made me feel bad that I do it so much. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to not not do it as much, but it, it's a subconscious thing. And yeah, I'll I'll be sort of periodically taking questions as well. So favorite animal from Peter Jackson's King Kong, 
probably Feructus, but... Yeah, no, if I had no lips like Tigrex, then it wouldn't be an issue, would it? But I love uh, pretty much everything on King Kong's Skull Island, so it is it is a hard it is a hard sell. Uh, it might be interesting for Sandbaroth to return in Wilds, but we'll have to see if that happens. So these are just generally a lot more buggy. They're, I think this is sort of what was planned, because Monster Hunter, they have the history of... They like to make everything in detail, even if the... Uh, the graphical fidelity of the games doesn't quite match up to that. So you see the, these are the Baryoth snacks. Not huge amounts to see here. And then we have Seadeus. So again, he's looking very Seadeus to see, though some of his other concept art, he looks very different. And one thing I've often thought about a lot of his concept art, and I think it's probably intentional, um, is that it's very, very man-like. It's very sort of human-y. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's made, oh, it, it almost looks like a weird sort of merman, like a giant merman almost. And when you look, like when you zoom in here, he's almost got that sort of demon face. And I'm glad that they sort of amped up the whale aspects a little bit more because I think he works better in that vibe rather than as a weird sort of man-whale. And no dunk face, that's a good point as well. Like, you zoom in on, on Sirius and he's got a very Dunkelostius-y face, which is, a, yeah, which is a nice touch, because then you can infer things about his, 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 his ecology from that. There's probably a giant human whale cryptid. I remember a, f a friend sent me a thing of... Um, it was like all the Norse... Uh, the whales of Norse mythology and other forms of myth mythology. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there's there's some really weird ones in there. Alright. More bugs. There's a hell of a lot of bugs. Uh, yeah, more Altaroth. Not, not huge amounts to say here. More... Seadeus, and he's getting closer now to his final design. He's got that sort of dunkier mouth with the sort of big grinding, crushing plates. That's sort of more like the finished product, though the eye placement looks a little bit weird there. It's in front of the horn. Um, but yeah, he's, he's pretty close to the, to the final design. So we'll speed past. We'll probably focus more on the ones that are a little bit more derived and less like their final products. So we've already got into Deviled Joseph, and you can see, like, they initially... They, they had a few ideas for Joe, it looks like. And he was originally a lot more slim and a lot more spiky. And you almost get the impression they wanted him to be a little bit more athletic um, before they decided on making him sort of more al almost like he sort of abused a lot of steroids and now he's effectively too muscular like he's almost on the bridge of sort of collapsing under his own weight which is a vibe that I really like for Joe uh, Returners for Wilds I I don't really have much of a much of a say there just yet just because we've only seen one map so I could I could list the monsters that I want to see, but you know if the if the game isn't right for them, the game isn't right for them. Um, there's plenty I'd like to see back, but yeah, I I I'm generally sort of I don't like sort of making wish lists in that regard. I'm much more interested in sort of seeing what Capcom have to give us, and I think at this point as well, I'm just much more interested in new content than returning monsters. I used to be much more sort of like, oh, let's have X back, let's have Y back. But now I, I really just want to see new stuff more than anything else, really. I wouldn't say it's weird to prefer Slim Joe. Um, but I think that said, as the world eater, as like the big fat gluttonous invader, uh, it, he works better um, as the sort of big bloated dinosaur. Rather than something just that just looks a little bit too normal, and yeah, you can see there, that's uh, they they almost had the idea for the for the prey carrying initially, 
but they were only able to implement it in <laughs> in a world. What monster would you put in Fortnite? <laughs> no idea. Never played it. Hopefully never will. Um, and as well, I want to bring up a point I made in the Kong video that a lot of people say uh, Joe is Godzilla. He's, he's monster fantified Godzilla put into the franchise. And I disagree. I maintain that Joe is the Vastatosaurus Rex, just very heavily exaggerated for Monster Hunter. Um, as the V-Rex is sort of, it's got that crocodile uh, skin as well, just something Peter Jackson really wanted. And the, like it carries the photodon, the juvenile kills when it's chasing Anne before the fight. And I do wonder if they, they sort of got that, the carrying idea from, um, from, from the V-Rex. Yeah, he, there's a little bit of Godzilla, I think, and in Savage Joe, in old-gen Savage Joe, he does the sort of thing where he rears up, and then does the dragon sweeps, um, and I think that's a little bit, that's a little bit of a goofy animation, I generally prefer Iceborne Savage Joe, I think he's pretty good. Um, and it's true, he does glow along the back, so I think there's some Godzilla in there, but I think there's also a lot of Vastatosaurus in there. Yeah, it is kind of surprising they haven't done more with Godzilla, because they all like him. Fatalis as immortal and godlike. Um, I think Fatalis works best when you don't know that much about him. I think he's sort of meant to have the Shroud of Mystery. And, yeah, I think, I think if that feeds into his myth, then yeah, that's fine. We've got some Gobel looking very gobel -y. He's, it seems like with Gobel, they, they knew what they wanted, wanted from the beginning. We've got Jaggy, we've got Baggy, and everyone is, uh, everyone, everyone's looking pretty much as they did. Gobel here, he looks almost a little bit more sort of ray-like or fish-like almost. And then he got sort of made uh, a bit froggier and fattier. But yeah, he, he's pretty much as he, as he was. Thoughts on the poll results? I wasn't really surprised, um... That, that's essentially the top 10 give a few of them. Like, I didn't expect Alatrion or Velcana to be in there. But yeah, they uh, that's pretty much what I was expecting to happen. And then with the rest of the poll past the top 10, that was really surprising. Seeing, like, who got... Who, who, who was very high, who was very low. It was quite a surprise. So we've got an early Zenoga. Well, he's pretty he's pretty similar. This is just sketch Zenoga. Another Ciadeus, a Renaplos. Everyone's looking uh everyone's looking as they were. Then we've got Karupako, who again is relatively similar to how he appears in game. He's got his crest blown up there. It looks a bit like you know in, in Looney Tunes when someone goes to fire a gun. And then someone else puts their finger in the barrel and it blows up in their face. It looks it looks like that has happened to him. Someone's plugged up his crest and it blew up. And then we've got one of the Morans. Who who is uh, yeah, it's it's as he appears. Giganox, and they did some weird stuff with Giganox. They they had it they get oh god, what is he even doing there? So it almost looks like they had a hunting animation planned for him uh, that did not come to fruition, where he would hop onto an Aptonoth and do whatever he's doing there. Although I imagine it would have probably been a Popo, because he's a uh, Mr. Tundra. But yeah, that's, that's, that's a very grim-looking embrace. And if his head and tail's there, I'm not actually sure what he's doing, but... I don't think it ends well for the Aptonoth. And yeah, Giganox here is as Giganox appeared in game. But he has some really, really weird, uh, he has some really weird fan art. Not even fan art, concept art. He's just giving him a nice hug and welcome in T Common Shark. Joe's skeleton, Yorgan as he appeared in game. And Yorgan actually has some really weird. Uh, and quite cool concept art. So let's hurry on up 
to that. Okay, we're getting the sort of the first of the weird Joes. Where it's not the athletic Joes, but it's he looks weirdly metallic here. He almost looks a little bit like the, the Hindenburg. Um I I'm not a fan. I think it looks weirdly artificial. It looks like he's made it, it does look a bit like Shinjo actually. <laughs> yeah, it looks it looks a little bit too um it looks a bit a little bit too much like a megazoid or something. And not being green is also a bit bizarre. It's an interesting idea and he looks too smooth as well. Joe looks best when he's got the the, the crocodile skin as well. And then it seems like they gave this to all the brute Ivans, where they've got the sort of, the head-on view, where he just looks very angry. Boo, Brachidios. Um, Brachidios has some interesting concept art, but this isn't it. This is just his final version. Then we have a Latrion, and again, a Latrion, this is just final Latrion. A lot of this is just sort of the, the finalised uh, finalized design. Alright, now we've got a bit more concept art. We've got Knife Zenoga, where he is even sharper and bladier. And as we found out in the 20th anniversary, Zen has some very weird concept art indeed. Uh, more on that in a bit. Uh, biomes you'd like to see in Wilds. I think a, a new swamp map would be nice. Um, but fifth gen didn't really have one. Um, in that it just got the flooded forest back. But the flooded forest is much more of a, a tropical rainforest with a flooded river in it. Um, and I think swamp more like the sort of first and second gen ones. Where it's more of a, a cooler swamp. Um, there, It looks like this. it's sort of we're getting the sandy plains too. In that we've got savannah and desert combined. So I'm pretty keen to see what they do with uh, savannah and what monsters they put in that. I think a boreal forest would be quite nice. Um, I think just more sort of cooler northern hemisphere environments. But Monster Hunter sort of goes snowy mountain and then essentially almost everything else is tropical or subtropical. And I think more boreal um, and paleoarctic styled environments... Uh, something you haven't seen very much of in the franchise. So I'd like some of those. And yeah, this is in is somehow sharpier, sharper and edgier than, than the Zenoga we got. And this one, this top one is uh, even more pinheaded and has really weird proportions as well. I, I lead the charge against uh, not liking Zin. But uh, compared to his concept art, the final Zin we got is probably the best. And then it was made better in World as well. And favourite Brute Wyvern is Anjanath. Oh, let's move on to Roggy. And this is horrible, this top one. That giant chest bubble is so <laughs> horrific. Like, it, it's so fragile. It looks so fragile. It looks like... You could just pop it and then all the poison would be leaking out. And yeah, that's a bit too gross. Um, well, yeah, someone pop his pimple, it's so grim. Ugh. It's like the throat sack that he has, it's still got, it's still, you know, semi translucent. But it's, yeah, it's this, it's, it's so clear. It looks like millimeters thick. It's very grim indeed. Um,. And then there's the bottom one, who, at least he doesn't have the hideous chest bubble, but, um, it's, it's still a bit goofy. He looks a little bit too sort of cartoon poisonous. Like, if you wanted to draw something that looked, you know, that had venom, that's what you'd do, with a sort of purple colour. And then we have a more, an even more armadillo-y uh, Volvidon. And I like this more. I think Volvidon's weird sort of, almost sort of lizardy head on top of his anteater slash armadillo body 
is ungood. I'm not a fan of that. Whereas making him sort of more mammalian and more armadillo-like is uh, is better. Yeah, I, I much prefer this Volvodon. Top looks like a flounder. It sure does. Um, they almost made him a little bit more axolotl-like. And I think axolotls are a really cool thing to sort of... Uh, to, to base monster designs on, just for that it's such a signature classic look. But then they sort of, um, they changed the guilds up a little bit. Hmm, a lot of interesting ones in this page. We have Agnacta, who is essentially Agnacta. This is, this is a finished design. So we'll, we'll skip on. So we've got some Azuros here. This this one on the right, I think, looks a bit too goofy. <laughs> the sort of evil grandfather mustache and huge eyebrows is a little bit too goofy, I think. Azuros as a whole can get a little bit too goofy, I think, as well. This one on the left, I think I prefer it, but it's still a little bit weird. There's something very off about it. I think his arms are a bit too long. The uh, the old man whiskers. And that weird sort of thing he's got on his nose as well. Like his carbuncle. That's, uh, that's a little bit odd. And you can see there's a little bit of badger in Azuros as well. This this bottom one when he's, where he's on all fours is a little bit more badgery. Um... And I think I do prefer this. I think this is a little bit more interesting than a sort of um, cartoon bear, which is what we wound up with. And I'm just not the biggest fan of Azuros in general, so I'd probably take anything. We've got a little bit more of a chicken-like slash dodo-like gargoyle, and then a truly hideous Logombi. But Logombi was, uh, was... There was never any hope for him, so, you know, what... What can you do? What can you do, really? And then we've got some chemistry and physics on how um, Amatsu breathes and does his fire. So we begin with the truly vast amounts of You Can Lost concept art. Like in this book, there is so much You Can Lost concept art, which is really, really surprising because with the interviews, um, with the, uh, for the 20th anniversary, they say how, um, how quickly they rushed out Freedom Unite, and how it was made in less than a year. So, like, 50% of Freedom Unite was just spent drawing you can loss again and again and again, it seems. This is almost a little bit like that, uh, Pacific Rim Kaiju Atachi. He's almost got a beak in that bottom one there. That's a little bit weird. It's not bad, but I think I do prefer sort of shovel-chinned final as your, um, not as your, so you can loss. Yeah, that is a little bit frontiery. The, uh, the, the, the gun tortoise. And there was also the, um, the concept art where it was the sort of sand god wyvern that never wound up being used, which I think stemmed from, a. Uh, from you can Lo you can loss and a cantor concept art, and then presumably Frontier just sort of co-opted that into the gun tortoise. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of ideas for you can loss there. Favorite final boss, probably. Ooh. Good question. I might. Say, so, I actually think a lot of the final bosses are generally quite good. Um, it might be White Fatalis, just because I quite like White Fatalis in general. But I think they're all pretty good, except maybe Xenogiva, who I think is a bit tame and doesn't really lean on the alien aspect hard enough. I enjoy most other things world does. Oh shit, no, it is Guys McGorm. Fuck, I can't believe I forgot. It is Guys McGorm. Um, by a little bit. 
Uh, White Fatalist, I think. Um, he he used to be my favourite, and Guys McGormick's definitely been shafted a little bit in the lore, and he's a little bit slow, uh, sort of stemming from being a portable game monster. Um, but yeah, it is it is Guys McGorm, and then it's probably White slash Old Fatalist. I do. I still like Gogmazios. Um, I'm not as sort of for you pilled as a lot of other people in the fandom. So I think he's generally pretty sound, but I, I'm not 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 quite as hard on him as uh, some other people. Thunderbugs, Fulgabugs, even, and they they put a hell of a lot of effort into something you were never going to see into Iceborne. But that's why we love the Monster Hunter team. They had a plan and an artwork for everything. How much would you have to be paid to play Frontier? One million. No, I'm kidding. I've played a little bit of it or a little bit of it already. I didn't get much further than the Poo Crab, and I haven't gone much further than that. And I fought normal Espinas, but that wasn't on my account thing. Did I skip the Wasp Queen? Oh, I did. Um, there we go, the Wasp Queen. That weird sort of lava sack she's got in the bottom one. That could have... They could have done something interesting with that. It's like... Um, when I was listening to the, uh, the developer commentaries for The Lord of the Rings, the third one, and how Peter Jackson wanted to make the... Uh, how he wanted to make Shelob as disgusting as possible... I always thought um, the grossest thing he could have done is, like, in the books, she's described, like, her underbelly is described as glowing faintly and sort of having, like, this, a lot like this, having this sort of termite queen sack-like appearance. And I thought if they gave her that and made her look like this sort of giant brood mother of spiders and it was pulsating and glowing, then that would have been incredibly gross. But he sort of went for the, the mutated head angle instead. But yeah. Alright, back to the endless days of Yukon loss. So yeah, they, they did make him like a big snowplow. Allow the pre to approach its prey soundlessly. Uh, I'm doubting that. They had slim Yukon loss as well. And then they made him the sort of fat, chunky one that he is. And it's like uh, with a cantor, they started out with a very crocodilian-like head, and then they sort of uh, changed it into other things. And it seems they tried to briefly use that crocodile aspect for Yukonlos as well. So maybe we will get a big crocodile monster someday. Because we have Legiacorus, but I imagine they uh, imagine that's not enough for them. Then we've got Sleepy Crocodile Yukon Loss. And he seems a lot smaller initially as well. Maybe he wasn't intended to be a final boss initially. So this is much more finished product for uh, Volvodon, and for Roggy, and for Gargua, and for Slagtoth. Then even more, you can loss. They had less than a year, and they spent so much of it on you can loss. I don't find guys McGorm that crocodile like. Um, he's really more sort of like a mole dragon with sort of a a fish like face. There's almost a little bit of Barioth in this one. In that he's got the sort of the the furry aspects. He's intended to be wolf-like apparently. The saber teeth. Maybe Barioth is actually born from an old Yukon Lost concept. Because as we'll see later on. They had no idea what they wanted Barioth to be. They they really threw a little bit of everything in there before they made him a uh, before they made him Sabertoothed Nagakuga. 
so hard no comment and then you've got a little bit more of a crocodile slash dunkelosteus a eucalyptus there as well and apparently they migrate and yeah i do think even if they didn't want water combat this early that Eucanos was generally intended to be um, something that, that swam, something that was partially aquatic. And I think they sort of represented that with his burrowing and the fact that his uh, his map in, um, in third gen, in portable third, seems to be like on a sort of an ice flow. So Eucanos went through a lot of different, a lot of different interpretations. The big page of Nibel, but this is pretty much Nibel. And then we've got sort of final you can loss at long last. The fin has been toned down, he gets his big shovel chin. There's still a little bit of Dunkelosteus in the face, but overall they sort of they combined everything and then toned everything down by about 40%, and that's how they got you uh, can loss but the whole fin thing as well i always took that to be like like a, other, some other people have said the sort of um the icebreaker on a ship which is another thing that always led me to believe that he was intended to be partially aquatic even more nibel Duramboros as as essentially as he as he appeared in game. Duramboros is someone I hope comes back in Wilds, because I think him getting the sort of uh the sort of Takuda treatment would be a really nice thing for him, just give him more ecology, more environmental interactions, that sort of thing. But he's a really solid monster. But he's always just been held back a little bit by portable team not caring that much about ecology it seems the main thing was just what they wanted to do with his tail and he almost has the the gravios hammer tail there the plant cringe wiping indeed more finished roggy improved roggy some zin muscle And then just sort of bases in. More Zin, and he's a little bit more pinheaded and a little bit longer, but this is essentially the finished product. I suspect Wilds will be good. Um, all, all signs are pointing it to being good, but I really can't say much more than that right now. Boo, Lagombi, and Foolish Monster. Amatsu, but essentially as Amatsu appeared. Azoros, but again, this is sort of final Azoros. Then we get some more weird devil joke concepts. So, sort of like what I said earlier, um, Joe, like, they really, he actually looks so much like Vega in House of the Dragon in that bottom one. He's literally like wingless Vega there. Um, but... Yeah, like Joe, they really wanted to make sort of fat and chunky, presumably, to really get that aspect of the gluttonous world eater across. And I think this is quite an interesting way to to go about it. But he looks, you know, so heavy and he's got so much flesh and tissue that you really get the impression that it's all just drooping off the skeleton. Like... The, th the very thing that holds him up is, is not strong enough for the amount of muscle he's got. He's starting to sag off his own bones, which I think is a really, really interesting uh, design aspect. They sort of turned it a little bit more into muscle and sort of roidosaurus in the final product. But I think this is just a really nice idea. And I absolutely love... Yeah, he looks like he's melting. He looks like he's sort of falling apart at the seams. And maybe not for like a base monster or creature, but like with Vega in House of the Dragon, I love taking something, making it really old, and then just aging it in that appropriate way and making it look like it's sort of sagging under its own weight. 
But I think everyone who just whines about Vega is an idiot. I think she's fantastic. That's such an interesting and nuanced design that is so much better and more original than everyone just saying, why doesn't she have more spike? And yeah, that weird melting one, I think, like you'll see later, Brachidios, they wanted to have uh, oil, his sort of burning oil. And I wonder if they wanted to give that uh, to Joe as well, before they gave him Dragon. Because I do like sort of sagging old melting Joe. And potentially oil Joe as well. And I guess they also turned that eventually into Gog as well. Now we get to the very weird Giganox. With the eyes on his jowls. It is, it is pretty interesting. Uh, Giganox went from having too many eyes to not having enough. And I think I prefer his final design, but this one, especially on the right, I think is a really interesting one. And I think just uh, giving a, giving something too many eyes to make it creepy rather than none was almost like, you know, the opposite side to Kezu. And I think, you know, it's one of that thing, one of those things that people complained a little bit about in Try is how a lot of the monsters really felt like replacements for pre-existing ones. And... Giganox is guilty of that because he is you know, just so much like Kezu. Whereas I think this feels a lot more like its own thing. It's also very disgusting. Like those bizarre big rat teeth it's got and the eyes on its jowls. I think they, they could turn this into its own monster. Because it is suitably weird and disgusting. And yeah, no, there's, there's Fasona, whoops, there's Fasona Barioth. What the, what the actual fuck is this? This is horrible. He's got his Egyptian Nemez on as well. It's, it's horrific. Let us not dwell on that. Let us purge it from our memories. And then we've got what I think is a early Barrios. Not Barioth, Baroth in the top there. Where he almost looks uh yeah, someone's OC left in the, <laughs> left in the concept art. And he looks snow designed, so maybe Jade Barrio Baroth came from the the idea of a very early Bar Baroth. Who knows? It is a little bit Anjanathy as well. I'm not sure who that is meant to be, but I've always assumed it was meant to be Baroth. All right, this really is a cursed page. We've got more Joe. This is sort of, again, it's slimline Joe. And between the sort of the, the three ways they went with Joe of Roidosaurus, Melted Joe, and Slim Joe, I think Slim Joe is actually my least favourite because he's just a bit too much of a, like, he's just a normal dinosaur, effectively. He's a normal dinosaur with weird teeth. Whereas most of the other brutes have that Monster Hunter aspect about them that uh, that makes them the more interesting animals. And then I don't know who this is meant to be. It's a Thunder Flying Wyvern. But I really don't have a clue. Who knows, maybe this will be Wild's flagship. You heard it here first. Because I don't know who this got translated into, who this was meant to be. But it's uh, it's not a bad design. We've got a Piscine who never saw the light of day. He doesn't look all that Jorotodus like either. He almost looks a bit like Dunkelostius, but with um, limbs. So who knows, maybe we will get more Piscines in Wilds. Yeah, it, this Joe does look quite a bit like Fang from Primal. Imagine if Cephadrum goes to the best pissing fight. We hope, we hope. An early Legaicris concept that isn't bad, but I much prefer the final the final product. Could Fang take down a Joe? 
If the plot willed it, she could. Um, if the plot willed it. Yeah, so this is, it's almost like more typical lake monster slash sea monster. This is like Nessie and Cadborosaurus and all of them sort of turned into a monster hunter design. And it's not bad, but it's just not like Icarus. Um, so yeah. It, I think it works as a monster hunter design, but it's... It's it's not great as as Legacris. You know, this is uh this is something you could still put into the franchise though, I think. Could Fang beat Goku? Uh if if Spear was helping, yes they could. You've got the sort of storyboarding for the opening for Portable Third. Any thoughts about Rajang being in Wilds? Unfortunately, I feel he'll prob he probably will be. Then we've got Mauler Gyacrus. Mauler Gyacrus concept art. Um, again, more sort of generically lake and sea monstery. But the, I think the idea behind Gyacrus was just let's make a sea monster and, you know, monster hunter fight it. And this one, it's almost sort of like Eastern Dragonish with the uh, with the antlers there. Again, I think I think Legacris has a lot of good concept art. I I think the final product that we did get is uh, is the best one. But I think a lot of his designs you could very easily make into their own Leviathans. And I think there I think there was probably yeah, like some people are saying. There was probably some overlap between uh, Legacris and Seadeus before they got split into their respective monsters, with one going more whale and one going more crocodile. More zinny. They're sort of getting closer to final laggy now. And there's a very, very early, uh, early Ligarchus where he was essentially just a big fish. And there was that uh, sea serpent in the first art book that was, I can't remember what they called it, it was like the ancient fish dragon or something. So it seems Ligarchus did start life as like a long fish before he was, uh, he was turned into the crocodile, the long crocodile. Favourite and least favourite monster class. Favorite is probably flying wyverns, just because that's such a versatile class. You can do you can do so much with them. Least favorite, um, I'm not sure if I have a least favorite, because I think essentially every class has something good to offer. Maybe fanged beasts, though. Not so much the primate aspects, but I think a lot of fanged beasts are. Haven't really found their foothold in the series yet. So this is much closer to Final Laggy. He's still not quite as crocodile-y. He's a little bit more Oh snake wyverns, yeah. <laughs> like that that's a pretty that's a pretty easy answer. I can just say snake wyverns. But there's only one of them and he's alright. And yeah. He's not he's not quite as crocodile -y. he's a bit more he's still a bit sort of Loch Nessy, a bit more plesiosaury. And then there's weird spiky bloody Legacris, who I'm glad they didn't go with. That is a very smaug like face, isn't it? Yeah, that's a really, really similar. But I think Smaug, I, rem I think I remember Peter Jackson saying um, that Smaug is effectively just like a Varanid. He's a monitor lizard that they put stuff on top of, effectively. And that's uh, that's what they use for the design. So maybe, maybe uh, like, you can sort of see it, I think, a little bit. Uh, Minotaur Fung Beast uses weapons. I think that would be... So long as it's sort of like Goss, where it doesn't start getting too human and you feel like, you know, you're still you're still fighting an animal, you're not fighting 
a hominid or something like it. I think that could work. But I think that's already sort of Goss's niche. Um, and it might feel a little bit redundant. Yeah, and see, like this one especially is so... I've always found it so weirdly human slash merman-like. Like these look so much like arms, the face, just the overall silhouette is like a sort of diving merman. And I've always... Yeah, I thought, I th I've always thought sort of final CODS is the best one we got. Uh, generally, I like the Linians. Um, I don't have huge amounts of thoughts of them. I think as sort of parts of the lore in the game series overall, I think they sort of, they add a little, <laughs> they add sort of a, a levity to it. Um, to sort of balance out the danger of the quests. So yeah, I think um, I think they're good. Any direction I explicitly don't want to see Monta to go in. I think... So I think it might well go in a direction that I don't like, which is sort of going f too much down the sort of frontier slash um, over-the-top aspect where it starts to resemble its clones a little bit too much, um, which is something I think portable team are really at risk of. But so long as sort of main team continue doing what they're doing, then that wouldn't really bother me as much. Because I think, like a lot of people think I just hate portable team, and it's not quite that simple that I think um, portable team... They, a lot of what they do just it winds up straying too close to Monster Hunter's clones and not to what makes Monster Hunter different. Like when you see people saying, you know, I want it to be more anime, I want it to be, you know, less realistic and have more crazy monsters. Like, that's already what Dauntless and that other Monster Hunter clone are doing. It's sort of that Monster Hunter attention to detail that has always set it apart from generic fantasies and the more it abandons that, the closer it gets to its clones. And um, I think so long as it has the brand name, it's never really going to be a risk of um, of actually sort of, you know, actually suffering sales-wise. But I think uh, the quality of the games would suffer. And yeah, like, um, my favourite monster is a portable monster. Which is why I say I don't hate the portable teams. I think they're just at risk of sort of Losing the edge sometimes. And then we have Ludroth, who had a lot. Yeah, that was it, Wild Hearts. That was the thing I had in mind. And Ludroth had a lot of things going on, including a platypus who was sort of later turned into to Trenodon and Somnicanth. They sort of gave everyone Dunkelostius faces in 3rd gen until they could figure out what they wanted to do with them. And he still has... Um, he still has the Dunkelostius teeth, but he has a much more lizard-like face. And that top one is... hideous. Why does he have a sweet corn tail? That's so ugly. Like they they really made that look as much like sweet corn as they could, and I have no idea why. They really wanted Dunkelostius, yeah, they did. They really wanted a platypus for a long time as well, because Palumu was part platypus initially. They they really really wanted it, but we might get more platypuses, but as, as the sort of fat slash, you know, inflation monsters show. If they find something they like, they just keep putting it in. So, yeah, who knows? We may well get more platypi. Joe in the snow. And this is sort of close to final Joe, but he's still a little bit slim. Ugh, if there's one thing that got worse than the old Roggy that we saw, it's this one. Like, again, that back bubble looks so fragile. And those cheek bubbles as well. I think the idea of making Roggy sort of like a soft-shell turtle is 
quite interesting. Um, and I think sort of more turtle monsters that you can actually fight, unlike Zora, would also be an interesting new class, whether they make sort of... Um, whether they make them amphibians or a new class or whatever. Um, but but this is this is so ugly. Like, everything about him looks so poppable, and that's <laughs> he's too fragile. And just the idea of the big black back blister is... Uncomfortable. Mario enemy, yeah. And then we got a version of Ludroth who looks a little bit great Jagrassy. He look he looks a lot fiercer and more intimidating than both the other concept art and final Ludroth. Which is might be why they toned him down. They might have thought that looks a little bit too fierce for someone so early in the game. And then we have uh, Baryoth starting to resemble Baryoth a lot more. He doesn't have his saber teeth here. He's got much more of like a typically cat-like face. And he's sort of he's sort of much more snow Nagakuga here. And yeah, no, thank you for the comments regarding Skull Island video. I'm glad glad you enjoyed it. I think that's probably my favourite video I've made. Um and thank you for the, the comments as well. What the back bubble is like to touch. I probably imagine it's like frog skin. So not great. Nice Moran piece there. And then we have the sort of the many faces of Baryoth. There's even more to come. This one's quite this one's quite cool. Like I like the sort of the mask aspect. Um, that's quite interesting. And then you can see how sort of early on, like a lot of Baryoth's lore is very polar bear um, angled, like with the snow caves that he digs and his preference for feeding on fat and organs and stuff. And the fact he literally has, you know, he's got like a monster hunter pinniped there. You do get the impression that Baryoth was really, they really sort of were very... Um, polar bear inspired with they made when they made him although a lot of that didn't get finalized into his design but it definitely still sticks in his lore but then we have this one and this is a very polar berry barrioth and i really really like this one maybe not so much the tail although the tail's not bad it looks like a giant paw but this is the, this is like the the bear flying wife and that we never got. Um, the icicles on the neck are very stylish. I really like that. The bear like face. This is just a really nice design. But the, yeah, the wings don't fit something this chunky, and that's sort of why I imagine they steered away from this. Is that um, he? Uh, I imagine if they try and made a sort of a bear wyvern, it's just gonna ste it's just, it's just gonna wind up being too much like Tigrex. Because Tigrex is, you know, he's the, the brute force flying wyvern in that regard. And to make a sort of bear themed one would be just making white Tigrex and then just changing his design. So they probably felt they had to make him much more agile to to uh to step away from that, which is a shame because this is so nice. And you are indeed noticed Ocean's Guardian. Yeah, this is a really nice design. I don't think it's a shame it got lost. It's just so stylish and yeah, we can dream. Then we've got some more burial faces where, yeah, he does look like he's been hit in the face with a cartoon frying pan. So Baryoth had a lot of very interesting concept art. And I think the final design is a little bit weird. Um, just the face and the how the tusks are arranged. He constantly looks like he's sort of labouring around his own teeth. And I think they could have uh, they could have styled that generally better. Got some Agnacta concept art there sort of some storyboarding. That would actually be a really nice thing to do if he if he drilled holes in the ceiling and then lava came down from that. 
that would be quite cool. That would be a really good way for him to use his environment. But alas, I, I imagine they probably axed that because that would have been really hard if there was constantly like lava rain pouring from the ceiling. He could have done it in G-Rank, though. They can bring that back. And yeah, with the uh, Baryoth being polar, um, I do wonder, as like a tinfoil hat theory, if Baryoth was initially intended to be a water combat fight, and they were really, really going to go hard on the, uh, the polar bear aspect. There is no proof for that, other than the concept art of him sitting on his ice floe, surrounded by water. But, you never know. You never know. So here's the page of Baroth and Baryoth. So there's a really interesting Baroth concept art where he was a rhino. And I like Baroth and who he is. But I think a rhino would have been quite interesting. And yeah, you can see he's literally blasting shit at the player there. So it was like a sort of a rhino-hippo combo. But I think fight-wise... He, he probably would have just wound up too similar to Bulldrome. He would have been Bulldrome with a mud mechanic. So as cool as this design is, he might have been a little bit um, a little bit of a bland fight. But you never know what they could have cooked. So who knows, maybe Rhino Baroth could have been good. It is, it is a really nice design. It's sort of a Monster Hunterified Rhino. So who knows, maybe in Wilds. Then we've got what is essentially an early concept art for Magnum Arlo, so Boo. And then we've got Lagombi Baryoth. Mud for the Mud God indeed. So it seems the final, it seems like Lagombi did actually spring out of Baryoth, which is really weird. And then we've got sort of like, just sort of tabby cat Baryoth, which I also don't like. I think that's just a bit too much like a cat with wings. And he's got his weird paw tail as well, which seems like something they were really insistent on with early Baryoth designs. Though he would have that sort of a foot on his tail. And then there's that sort of, that bottom where he's, he's almost like a sort of ice weasel in a way. Which... Looks quite woolgy. Yeah, it is woolg energy, proto woolg. More Seodeus. We get quite an interesting, what I imagine again is Baroth, where they sort of kept the brute wyvern but gave him a, a very hippo like face. And I also think this is quite cool as well. I think final Baroth we got is... Um, he's very sort of fitted to his mud role. Like they said that they partially based him off a bulldozer after seeing one at work in a construction site. And you can really see that in how he uses his head to sort of scrape the mud. Um, but this is still quite a nice, uh, quite a nice design. Uh, Jurassic Park being rebooted again. Um, no comments so far. Like, you never know. Like, in theory, there's nothing to stop a skilled writer and a skilled director getting their hands on it. But statistically, that doesn't feel very likely. Um, but yeah, I think <laughs> that franchise will probably continue to just sort of stew in its own juices until the money stops flowing. Yeah, this, I think this could also be an early Brachidios as well. Um, because the, the arms are very developed too. Not quite to the extent of Brachidios, but yeah. That's just quite a nice design overall. And yeah, like this, it almost looks like he's covered in eyes, which is a bit weird. And those droopy ears look very uh, incongruent with the rest of him. But it's an interesting idea for Renoplos. Mm. 
That's a really nice Legiacris concept art of sort of the finished project. Um, yeah, just, just a really nice piece of artwork. Not much else to say. And yet, the Remogras weren't in game. And then the sort of the ending cutscene of Try, a little bit of storyboarding for that. Um, yeah, and that's such a nice ending to the game. Like, I have a lot of issues with Try, and because I was sort of playing the uh, playing the games earlier, it wasn't my first one, so I wasn't quite as nostalgia blasted as it as some are. But that final cutscene is fantastic, and when you sort of see things like that, you can understand why so many people really love that game. Um, and it's the one that I most want to replay. I remember in a Q&A a while ago, I said it was DOS. But I've since, um, since changed my mind. I think Try is the one I really, really want to play again. Because the first time I played it, I wasn't... Mm, Quite giving it as much as a chance of I should as I should have done, and then most of the third gen that I replayed to sort of remind myself how the fights were was three U rather than base try, so it is something I want to to play again fully. And yeah, Spielberg and Jurassic Park, um, because I think Spielberg had the idea of like human dinosaur hybrids initially. Um, and and generally some quite dumb ideas. And I don't think that he's a bad filmmaker, but at the same time, like, you read some of his interviews and some of the things he says and some of the things like, um, like, Jurassic Park succeeded, uh, but he literally said in an interview his whole goal with it was just making, was remaking Jaws on land. And it's sort of, I don't want to say it diminishes him as a filmmaker, but that's such a reductive thing to say about your own film, I think. And just some of the things he said about his other projects as well. That, yeah, he's, uh... Yeah, he seems to almost tar and feather himself a little bit at times. Yeah, so I think the wing drakes might be able to fly. But even then, like, their wings might be a bit too short. The wing loading may not be good enough. But as you look at pterosaurs the same size and they typically had uh, much bigger longer wings uh, but who knows so we've got ah uh, here we go now it's tempting to say that this is the the good version of Eurogam that we never got but I argue that um, if we all loved Eurogam too much we would be so crushed with what happened to him in Iceborne that it would have made that wound so much more severe that uh, we wouldn't be able to cope, would be full of rage. Um, so we, we needed to dislike Eurogun for, um, to, to, to be able to accept that. So, so that's why this good Eurogun <laughs> had to die because because we would have been too angry in Iceborne otherwise. Like, when I saw that, I just remember, like, the Brachidios just wiping him out, and then him getting his ass kicked by Odogron in a copy-and-paste turf war. I just remember thinking, <laughs> my god, thank fuck I'm not a Eurogun fan. Because that was painful to watch. But with that said, like... This is just so much a better design. Like, some people don't like the yellow brick road aspect to him, and I think that's fair enough. If they, if they, wanted, to, you know, if they, if they wanted to change the skin, I think that'd be, that'd be good. Um, and the funny thing is, despite the fact that clearly everyone hates Steel Eurogun, he's apparently the least favourite monster in the entire franchise, I actually really like Steel's colours. <clears throat> I don't think he's that bad. I think if they gave the sort of the steel aspect to this Eurogun, that could be quite a cool monster. But just the face and everything, like, the chin looks so much more sort of worked into the jaw, rather than that horrible sort of human face he's got. The eyes are more to the sides, um, much more like, you know, an animal that's shifted away from its predatory past, rather than the horrible human face that he has. 
the nostrils, that's nice. This, you can see his vents. <sighs> this just is sad. But like I said, it had to happen for a reason. And that we, we couldn't let ourselves love Eurogun too much. We've got some very, very underfed jaggies here. And a very spiky great jaggy. We've got an early Agnacticon Sceptile there, who looks quite a lot like that Frontier Leviathan. But I think the <clears throat> the one we got, the final product, is better. Um, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. No, I think it's just the more original looking monster. And I don't know who this is meant to be. Maybe this is a an early Joe take. But again, I think I think the sort of the final Joe that we got is the better one. Ray Harry Housing Monsters, I I'm not one hundred percent sure, but there's a lot of stop motion monsters that I liked um from that era, but I'm not sure how many were done by Ray Harry Housen. I would need to sort of check which are done by him. Um before I answer that. There we have a very dog raptory Jagia with an egg. And it seems like they, they really uh, went a little bit harder with the dog aspect. But uh, yeah, they then they then made it a more of a typical raptor. Legendary Godzilla design, I think is good. Like I think Legendary Godzilla might be my favourite. Um, Godzilla Minus One is probably my favourite Godzilla film. But it was just phenomenal. But I generally really like um, um, Legendary's design. And then we've got some more sort of finished concepts. Kelby. And this is another thing as well. So I've said um, <clears throat> in the past, and like with, with Devil Joe as well, that I believed um, that they took a fair amount from both King Kong and King Kong's concept art. And this version of Jaggy is very, very similar to the dinosaur Parasodon in World of Kong, which is like a little raptor that hooks itself onto the rocks and then catches fish. And its concept art is remarkably similar to this. It's effectively almost the same pose. It's got the same sort of inferred ecology here, the same lifestyle. So I really think that um, that they had a copy of that World of Kong somewhere and they occasionally draw from it. And hello, Mr. Sawyer Lee as well. Uh, good to have you here. Loved your most recent video as well. So yeah, I think there's definitely some World of Kong in, in the ideas here and that they sort of take a little bit from it um, occasionally. But it's like the Rotten Vale as well um, is very much like the Bug Chasm. Great Jagras is very much like the Photodon. Um, Odogron is very much like the, the beast in the book called the Carver, which is like a sort of giant agile therapsid. Redesign any monster beside Magnamalo. Uh, quite a few of them. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing Brachidios redesigned. Because I think Brachidios could be made fairly easily into a good monster with some fairly minimal tweaks. But I'll probably talk more about that on that uh, when it's his video. And yeah, I'm going to make a second herbivore video. Um, so, like... When I saw that we're getting the sort of the new Kestodon like wyverns in wilds, as well as the new um, sort of stegosaur pangolins, um, I think I decided then I would make a second herbivore video, but it will probably be after wilds, and I'll probably lump them all in together for another medley video. Favourite small monster? So, in terms of small, small ones, it's probably Mosswine. In terms of like the herbivores as well, it's probably the Popo. I think I've seen Guggenheim's. Uh, that's the one where it has the sort of the smooth back and the heavily armoured front. That's not a bad idea, but um, I was sort of... I was talking about this the other day, and I think Brachidios, he should almost look like he's wearing a, a sort of um, a bomb vest or like an armour vest. But it's like all his power should be up front. Um, 
He should have all his armor up front and then a relatively sort of unarmored backside and then have that as the obvious weak point. And that is very similar to Rajang, but then um, Ra like Brachidios himself almost feels like the third gen replacement for Rajang because he was absent for all of those games. Um, but yeah, more on that later. Some more bugs. Royal Ludroth got your Rock Tours and Epioth. Then we've sort of got final, final finished Laggy, and I think it's the the best best interpretation of him from all the all the concept art. Final Baroth, and then so we're nearing the end of the stream now. It would be remiss if we did not talk about the the concept art supplied for from the uh, from the twentieth anniversary that showed us the very early takes of Zin, um, and this is really really weird. <laughs> like I was thinking for a while about what the proportions of this reminded me of, and then I realised that he's literally like uh, Crash Bandicoot. Like, he's got the really small legs, the long arms, the hunched upper body. They really sort of combined Shadow the Hedgehog and Crash Bandicoot into, <laughs> into this. And a little bit of Batman as well. And yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so horrible. Like, again, I'm not the biggest fan of sort of the final Zin design we got. But I will of course admit it's ten times better than Crash Bandicoot. Ugh. Like you said, it took them a long time to finalise what Zenoga should look like. <laughs> I'm glad that they stepped away from this. Yeesh. And then there was this as well. Where <laughs> the concept art of him literally kneeing Grathalos in the face. It is. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. And like... Portable team have often sort of from th from effectively Zin onwards, they've often made their flagships sort of more characters than monsters, and it almost seems like it started it started quite early on with this very sort of human fighting style, where he's literally kneeing Grathalos in the face. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, so, if nothing else, from all the concept art, we did probably get the best version of Zin. But then, it took us until Worldborn to get the best version of, uh, of Zin overall. Alright, so, that is the end of 3rd Gen concept art. I hope everyone enjoyed the stream. Um, and... I probably should have advertised it more beforehand, but I can see 169 nice people in the chat. So yeah, hopefully everyone enjoyed. And it will be, you know, available to watch when this closes as well. So, I'll begin to start saying goodbyes. Thank you very much for all the comments. Thank you very much for tuning in as well. Um, yeah. And there will be more of these, of course. There'll be a fourth gen one um, uh, where we go through, obviously, fourth gen concept art. And I'm still trying to find a lot of the fifth gen one because it's mostly in the world book. Um, so it's just finding that online. But there will be a fifth gen one. So, so long, everyone. Have a good rest of your day, evening, morning. The, the thing he says in Truman Show, if I don't see you, good evening, good morning, and good night. And yeah, see you on the next one, hopefully.